everybody. <laughs> you just gonna have to keep saying hi until everybody uh, joins us. Yeah, we're waiting for everybody to pop over. We had, a, of course, some technical difficulty because that's just how it goes, it seems, whenever we do a Facebook Live. And now this is our first YouTube Live, so we had okay. to work out a few bugs. Are we live, you guys? Okay, so yes, we... Yes, keep chatting though, but I'm going okay. to send people over to the correct link. So we're getting everybody coming over from the other one that wasn't working to this one. So as soon as you have arrived here, go ahead and type in hello and where you're from, just so we can know that you're here and you can see me and you can hear me. That's really important. So Leah, let yeah. people know that in the live chat next to the window, okay. there's a link there. If they follow that link, that's where you're live. Okay, so... If you follow the link in the live chat, aren't they here already? Oh, if they no, hear me, okay, never mind. So yes, once you've landed here, which we hope all of you come over, let us know you're here. Say hello. Put your name in. Yes, we you, have Tina. Yes, we have Rachel, Tina, Belinda. Rachel. Yes. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hello. We have Myra from El Salvador. Oh wow, that's Virginia. awesome. Yes. Yay. So we're, we're just going to give it a few more minutes for everyone to come over. Are you kind of watching that, Emily? Yes, okay. we've got lots doing there. Roseanne, hi Roseanne from Sun, Arizona. So here's a fun thing. I, I think since we're waiting for people to come over, in the meantime, I'm going to have Matthew, who's behind the camera here, kind of do a spin around our office. We were in our craft room. We had a beautiful set. Everything was just ready to go, and it just wasn't working with the internet. So we moved over to our studio. Um, where everybody's sitting. So I'm going to have Matthew turn, spin around and say hello to everybody. So this is the team. Everyone's here today too. That We have a full Woo! house. All 10 of us are here today. So say hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Okay, we have lots of people here now. Sue okay, is saying hello. She's very excited to be here. Good. Thank you guys for being so patient and getting this going. It, hopefully, we'll work out the bugs and we'll eventually just be pros at this, right? So, are we waiting for anyone else, or do we think we have? I think we're pretty good. Much. Okay. We've got lots of people here ready to go. And um, one quick question though before mm -hmm. you get started, Cheryl is asking, do you recommend a spray fixative for your flowers? I don't. Um, I know some people have used it. You can check around. I have never used a spray fixative. I don't see any purpose or reason for it. And I don't want to damage the crepe paper. So I'm afraid um, sometimes chemicals might change the color. And uh, so no, I, I've never found a need to do that. We have a lot of um, crepe paper flowers that are have been around for a while. And there are some colors that do fade a little bit and that's just part of crepe paper. We're working on that, believe me. Um, but you can put them away in a box and, and keep them safe in between seasons when you don't use them. But you really don't need to use a fixative. I want to, I want to introduce you guys officially to Emily because she's the one that's going to be asking your questions. So you all now have British accents coming through her, right? So <laughs> say hello to Emily. Hello. I have my laptop. Yes. Ask questions. Yes. I'll do my best to answer. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we're all a big family here. And um, also I want to let you guys know, this is a members only for our, our annual members. And we went and asked all of you what you wanted us to teach. And we're going to do this quarterly. So we want you to give us your feedback. Send us emails, send us notes, whatever. Even here in this form, you can go ahead and say, hey, next time, could you teach this? We really want to make this for you guys. And the thing that I love about doing this live instead of or and in addition to doing our craft school is that I want it to be more interactive and so you guys can have your questions answered right in the moment you can have a little bit more of an experiential um, you know paper, paper craft making session with me so should we get started what do you yes, think okay let's go. all right so we have um, we're going to be making these crepe paper lilies today and this is something that's brand new I've been working on this for the last couple weeks and really trying to get down to the detail of how to make these they're absolutely stunning but they are so simple and I think you guys will see as we walk this through so we're gonna go ahead and go through the whole process of making this flower I am making them out of a double-sided crepe paper today and this is the this is the pack that I pulled it from 
Uh, this is, and I'll probably have to put on my glasses. <laughs> this is uh, the Flamingo and Peony Pink, which is the back side of this pack that I'm using today. And I've used both sides. So if you haven't used double-sided crepe paper yet, you guys, you're going to love it. It is like velvet. It's like butter. It is awesome. And then my other color that I'm using is from our double-sided green pack. And it's this one here. And that one is called Ferns and Moths. So those are the two papers I'm using. And then we've put in a link for you um, where for we, a pattern. And this is just a PDF. We'll go ahead and do an SVG as well later on. But this is the PDF that I'm going to use today. And I've included all six of the petals, but you're going to need a double and I'll show you how to cut those and then there's also some leaves. So even though I like to fill up my page because I feel like if I have one little pattern here and you print out and it's a blank page, it's a waste. So you actually have six. You only need one, but if you have a bunch of friends over and you're, you know, sipping your tea and cutting crepe paper, they each can have a pattern. So I just need one. And something that you want to note, I always talk about this, is you want to look at the grain line of the crepe paper, and it's always on the pattern. This is really important. It's going to um, kind of tell your paper petals how to fold and how to, to move out, and so you'll want to follow that. Now, let me show you how I cut things. This is sort of my method. I, other people might have other methods. I'll take the width of my petal, and just sort of place it onto the crepe paper and then cut a strip about the same width. Last night when I was making, I was finishing making these, I counted that you can make 10 of these lilies out of one of these. So that's good to know. This is something people ask us a lot and we don't always pay attention to that. So we're gonna try and pay a little bit more attention of the quantity. All right, so the next thing for this petal, what I need to do is I need to sandwich the like on light color. So it's darker on one side and lighter on the other. I'm putting both of the light sides together. This is important and I'll show you why. And then I'll line this up to the edge. And you know, if you want to, this might be actually easier. Go ahead and cut it. That way you can see exactly how it's lined up. And you can also even do this little, I don't know, what is this called when you do this? Anybody? Jogging? Jogging your paper? What is that called? I think it is something like that. Like, okay. Yes, okay. You should know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Jogging works. Jogging works. Jogging works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, I encourage any of our crepe paper makers that are sitting here behind you, behind Matthew, to pop in if you have any little thoughts that you want to share. Please do. All right. So then I'm cutting a stack of two. And you can see it's really quite easy. All right, so for each of um, my lilies, I'm gonna need six of these. And you can see when I open it up, then I have a full flower. So I'm going to, I've already cut some, so we can just move right along. And I have this white piece of paper here because I'm gonna do some fun stuff. All right, so I'm going to make this lily with the light side up. So I'll go ahead and stack, or place, not stack, place, six of the petals like this. Okay. I'm going to show you one of the tricks that I figured out the other day. So one thing that I like um, that we have just recently found, and we have links for you guys, we have searched and searched and searched for the best wire, and we came across this paper covered wire. And is all of the crepe paper makers behind you <laughs> can attest, we love this wire. So this is white wire, and one of the reasons why we like the white is you can use it with a crepe paper and it doesn't show through with the dark green, and you can also paint it or color it. So I'm going to use this in my petal. We want to be able to, as you can see with these flowers, I'll show you one of the ones out front because this is the most new. Um, you can actually curl the petals, and it's so easy to form these when you have the wire in. So what I'll do is take my wire cutters and kind of measure on my petal. I'll go just a little bit longer than the petal itself. And I'll need one for each, so I'll need six. And I like to keep them as straight as possible. And you'll see why in just a second. So there's three. 
Looks like I can get three for every wire. Okay, I don't know why these, I'm bending my wire a little bit. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, I see why. I think I've used these too much and they're a little bit cool. Okay, so I have six wires. Then, I'm not going to use hot glue today. I, if you guys watch any of my paper flower videos, you know I love hot glue. Today, I'm actually using this quick dry tacky glue. And you can use, I mean, it, you could use any sort of Elmer's glue or school glue as long as it's white. I like the quick dry and I like the extra tacky just because I know it's going to hold really well. So here is the little trick. Yes. Do we have Sue a question? Sue is asking what gauge wire you're using. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. The, this little white wire is the finest that we could find. And it's a 26 gauge. So we want it as thin as possible. We don't want a lot of bulk in the petals and it seems to work really well for the inside of petals. We don't really use it for anything else other than that, although maybe one of the makers could say otherwise. <laughs> so here's my trick, you guys. I figured this out after I don't know how many times. I take my wire and just stick it right into the tube. Now, I thought that I always had to have a full, you know, bottle of this to make this work, but you don't. You just have to squeeze it so you can kind of feel it hitting the top and then just pull it out. And look at that, you have a perfectly covered wire. <laughs> Jessica, had you ever seen me do that before? No. <laughs> I don't know why I figured this out. Okay, then you can just place that right on top. Matthew, are you in close on this? The nice thing about this white glue, as you can see, I, I messed it up just a little bit on the edge. It's okay because it will dry clear. Now I'm going to take the other petal and place it right on top. So that it covers, you can see, you can't see the wire on either side. I'll place it on to my paper and just rub it down. Whoops, that kind of slid. That's okay, you pick it up and move it. Just rub my finger right down onto the petals itself. I like the wire sort of pressing through the paper a bit. And yes, question. Anna would like to know how many flowers you would get <clears throat> from one pack of the double-sided. Last night I counted and I can get 10 flowers out of one, out of one. So actually you can get 20 out of the double. So if you used both of the color ways, you can get 20 out of one pack. All right, so you can see there's a little ridge there and I actually like that because that looks like the spine of what you might see in a lily. Then I'll go ahead and just clip the end like this. So it's nice and clean and let that dry. So I should have had these done ahead of time. I might call someone over to help me. But now's a really good time for questions. Um, Virginia is asking if you often use tacky glue rather than hot glue. When would you when would you choose to, to use tacky glue as opposed to hot glue? That's a really good question. So tacky glue, I think works really well when you're when you're gluing petals together like this, when you have sort of that um, crossover. So a, a lot of times, I want to make one quick note. On these particular petals, my grain is going straight, but a lot of times when we're doing leaves and some other petals, we'll do kind of a V grain, so it you know comes together in the middle like this. When we glue petals together, you can use the hot glue, but it makes it bulkier. Uh, it, it just has a bigger bump. And so when I want things to be flat and smooth, the tacky glue works really well. Also, I want to note that the tacky glue works really great on the double-sided and heavy it works pretty well. On the extra fine you have to be careful because when the extra fine gets um, too much moisture it does tend to tear. So it really depends. Um, also if I want a, a, a bigger hold, if I need something to really hold on to a stem, I would definitely use hot glue. So Belinda is thanking you for the um, video where you showed us how to make double-sided paper. Do yes. you want to just go over that again quickly for anybody who hasn't seen yes. that video? Yes. Um, make sure, we can put this in the link as well, that you go watch it. It's actually a really great invention. I'm not even sure who on our team figured this out, but somebody did. Where we take 
uh, it's called Stitch Witchery. There's also a few, I think that's the brand name. The other names would be a Fusible Pellon, I think that's what it's called, anybody? Um, and it's these sheets, you can get it in a roll and you can trim that to the size of your extra fine crepe paper. It doesn't work with heavy crepe paper. You have to use extra fine and you can just iron them together. And you know, I don't use iron on low temp. It's iron on high temp and you might wanna put a cloth over the top just to make sure you don't burn it. It's a beautiful way to make um, double-sided and it gives your uh, color palette, it just expands it greatly. We did this with uh, copper and green to make magnolia leaves and they turned out so beautiful. So if people want um, links to the products that you're using, I'm popping those into the description underneath. I think that's great, yeah. Including the pattern as well. Yes, and any links to the videos like, like that. So I was up last night uh, finishing these up for you guys. I should have had this already pre-prepped and I apologize. So it's a good time for you guys to ask questions and you know anything else about crepe paper as well. There's four. Uh, when I was making these flowers, I decided to make them out of the double-sided. I think I, I, I would probably have to admit that double-sided is one of my favorite crepe papers at this point. Um, it really depends on the flower. Some work better with other papers. But I thought, hey, I want to see what this same pattern and the same flower, same techniques, how they work. And I'm going to have Matt to get close up. This one is the heavy crepe paper. And this one is the extra fine crepe paper. Same pattern, same technique. And they actually look really beautiful. I think they're just, they're different. So it, it, you know, it depends. If you only have a certain kind of crepe paper, go for it and make this flower with whatever you have. This flower doesn't really need a crepe paper with a lot of stretch. So even though, I, of course, I don't recommend it, but you could actually use some inexpensive um, crepe paper as well. So a couple of people are asking why the two lilies look different. Yes. And, so, how, and how you come to a decision to use a certain paper for the flower. Okay, so this one is made with the extra fine. I'm gonna finish this really quick and then while they're, they're uh, drying, I will actually pick these up and show you guys. Okay. Cheryl would like to know okay. if Hobby Lobby <laughs> is ever going to carry our products. We hope so. <laughs> I think that there are some conversations, but you can also get them online. We, we do have our shop and we also have Amazon. All right, so this is the extra fine and it is orange. We don't have orange and extra fine yet, which I'm gonna show you guys a little behind the scenes in a minute. I'm going to, nobody else knows about this. You're the first to hear. So I just wanted to test it and see how the extra fine would perform with this flower. And it actually looks really pretty. It is delicate. And I think, you know, when I set it down, you have to be really careful not to bend any of the edges of the petals where the wire, you know, isn't, isn't holding it up, but it looks great. This one is the heavy crepe paper. Again, this is a new color. Uh, we don't carry this right at the minute, at the minute, but you can find it, you know, elsewhere. Um, again, it looks beautiful. If this is what you have and this is the crepe paper that you want to work with, it still looks absolutely gorgeous. But of course, my favorite would be the double-sided because there's something really velvety about it. It's it's refined and it's fine, but it's stiff enough that it holds. And the double-sided crepe paper works really well with flowers that don't have a lot of curl and bend to them. And then adding that extra wire in there gives it what you need and it, it helps it hold. Does that answer your guys' questions? I just wanted to show you all the variety here. All right, so I'm gonna set that one here. Okay, so these are pretty much dry. They dry pretty quick. That's why it's called quick dry, right? So my next trick that I like to do is use pan pastels. And I don't know, have you guys used pan pastels? Let me know in the comments. So I have a couple different colors here. This is pearlescent red and pearlescent orange. And you know, it depends on if you want more of an effect. I'm gonna use the yellow or the orange, but I also use some of the red on some of the others. And I'm using a sponge and then I have just a very inexpensive paintbrush and you can get this at your craft store. I think I picked mine up at Blick. 
So I'll go ahead and rub that into the pan pastel and as heavy as I can get it right at the base and then just sort of feather it out on all of these. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I really love pearlescent paper. So this is perfect. It adds just a little bit of glimmer. And you can see, I'm not, I'm not being super specific with this. I'm just making sure I get a lot of color at the base and then maybe a third of the way up, just feather it out. Pen pastels were made really for, you know, artists, pastel artists, and there's some absolutely beautiful artwork out there that people use these pastels for. And we're using it for crafts, which is awesome. Okay, that's all I need on that. Then I'm gonna take my brush and just blend the edge. And that happens pretty quickly. Is there anything different that you would suggest for those people that don't wanna work with the pastels? Or you really don't have to do this. This is just kind of a fun added extra. Um, to add a little color and dimension. It's not necessary. The flower still looks beautiful without it. Uh, I think the pen pastel is, blends the best. We have used markers, but you get a little bit more of a hard edge on that. So I wouldn't really recommend markers. I think um, either just use them, you know, without any color variation at all or experiment. I mean, absolutely. That's how we figure out some of these things too is we just sort of actually run across it or experiment. So now I have, uh, this is a Tombow marker and it's um, 837 is the color. It's kind of a brown burgundy color. And since these are somewhat of a tiger lily, I'll go ahead and take my paint edge. So this is not the, it's not the little, here there's two different tips. So there's just the regular tip and then this is the paintbrush tip. I'm using the paintbrush tip and just making little tiny dots. Again, about a third of the way up. So the links to the, <coughs> excuse me, the products are now added to the description. So for anybody that wants those links, they can just refresh the page um, and they'll be able to get, find all the products that you're using today. Yes. And I want to go ahead and say this again, make sure you guys stay till the end because after I'm done with this, I'm gonna show you guys a sneak peek of our new product line that will be coming out to stores in January. We're very excited. Okay. Belinda's wondering if dough and ink tents bars would work. If you worked with those what was that? before. Dough and ink tents bars, if they would work. If, the it might work. You, I, we haven't tried it, but I think that's something we should you know, maybe test out, but again, take a piece of a scrap like this and just test it and play with it. Th this is what we've found so far, but we're excited, always excited to find new ideas and things out there that work really nicely. Okay, so that's all we need to do with the pastels and those petals are ready to add to our flower. So when making this flower, I think the biggest challenge for me was how to make the center of a lily because it's kind of complicated and detailed with these little tiny, you know, bits and pieces. This is the, what holds all the pollen. And what I came across is to use bakeable sculpting. You can get this at your craft store. They might have it at Michael's Joann's. I know they have it at Blick, that's where we go. And this is, again, really easy. I'm using this wire, the same wire. This is my 26 gauge and I'll cut it into, I'd say this is about three inches. And then I'll bend the wire, a quarter of an inch of the wire at a 45 degree angle like this. Then take off little tiny bits of the clay and I'm going to make what I call kind of a, a, a rice form. And I'm using a brown because that's the color that I want for my final. They have, I don't know, probably two dozen colors you can choose from. And I'll make six of those, all about the same size. You'll wanna kind of make sure they're the same size for each of the flower. They can vary for, per flower. Then I'll take my bent edge and lodge it in 
and then just sort of pinch that around so it's nice and tight. Sue is asking yes. if the sculpt is sim similar to Fimo. Yeah, you can use that as well. This is a bit finer. It has, um, the, the other clay has a bit of a grit to it. You can use air dry clay as well. I found this to work nicely when I'm working with teeny tiny bits like this. Uh, but again, it's, it's up to you guys to try different materials. So I make six of these and I'll lay them down on my baking pan. You'll bake him at 275 for about 15 minutes. And the first question that um, some of my team members had is, does it burn the paper on the wire? And it actually doesn't. So 275 isn't bad at all. Once you've pulled these out of the oven, you'll let them sit for about 15 minutes because they do take a minute to harden. Then I take, I have a couple of them left here that I haven't colored. So this is, this is them hard. And you know, as you can see, that's pretty hard versus this, it's not squishy at all. If this is a little wobbly, you can put a, a bit of hot glue to make sure it doesn't fall off. Then I'll take my yellow pen, and this is a 946. Again, the painter tip, and then I'll just color the wire. This is why we love our paper covered wire, because it's so versatile. So each flower has six of these. Then it has a centerpiece. And what I'll do on this is take three of those little rice pieces and put them together and then just roll the end to form this. It's pretty easy. It reminds me of uh, art class in grade school. All right, so I have one of these pieces. I'm going to place six of these little rice pieces around the edge. I'm trying to keep that in the center. Sometimes it doesn't work and that's okay because you can bend them around once you're done. I think this flower, I when, when I look at the simplicity or the difficulty of this flower, I think it's fairly simple to make. It's just a little bit of a labor of love. So I'm going to wrap my floral tape right about here and put these into a bundle. Then I have my 18 gauge wire that has the green paper cover. Just to make sure that we have some, this doesn't slide off, I'm gonna bend that just a little bit place some tape around it and then I'll go ahead and flatten that bend so you can see that it's sort of hooked into the tape and that will keep it from sliding off. And then I'll just make sure that's well adhered with the tape. Okay. There we go. And now the center's ready. So when I'm placing the petals onto this flower, I'll start with three and then I'll add the second set of three. Different ways you can do it. You can bend them first, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and place them. I want my tape to cover about a quarter inch of the base. So I'll try to place this in somewhat of a triangle. That way we have the three of them wrapped around the edge and then just tape these on. And this is, a, this is a little bit more unusual for me because I'll usually hot glue everything. Hot glue doesn't work well with, with tape and since I've already set my base with tape, it works best to tape on top of tape. Okay, then here are the second set of three. Do you have any tips for using the floral tape? Yes, I do. So I'll set this down for a second. So floral tape, when you pull it off the roll, you'll think tape, oh, it's supposed to be sticky. It's not, it doesn't feel sticky at all. Um, you have to activate it by both stretching it and by the heat of your fingers. It does get sticky after a while. It's basically a creped paper with wax on it. And it does get a little waxy and sticky. I try to keep all of my floral tape uh, taping to the end so that you know, I don't get my sticky fingers on the petals. That's helpful. Okay, so then I'll place my other three 
around the edge and I'm trying to position them kind of in between. If it's not perfect, don't worry because you can move them around. That's why we love the wire. It makes it extra malleable. Okay. You know, the one thing, I, the pan pastel, we love it because it's, it's really easy to work with, but I have to say that one of the things I don't love about it is it does flake off a little bit. All right, so I'm pulling back the three petals and then the other three. And then, so you know, this is just pulling it back. Now is where you can actually kind of bend that little tip right here. You can go in and stretch. If you want to give it a little stretch here, you can do that. Just know that you're gonna get some pan pastel on your fingers. Um, I also have some of the petals kind of curved right here. Just think of it as working with clay. You're just forming these flowers as you go. And there it is. Look how easy. Oh wait, I forgot. We have to kind of push these little guys out. So it's easy to remember. There's six of these and six petals. So one of these little pollen pods for each petal. And there's the flower. I know. <laughs> it's so simple. So the leaves are actually really simple as well. I have the pattern for you guys here. I have two different sizes and I made these specifically for this crepe paper and I'll show you why. I have a couple of questions. Sure. <clears throat> Naira is asking if the pan pastel, does it dry or does it keep transferring? Um, the pan pastel does not dry. It's, it is flaky. Um, I would say that, you know, once you're done with the flower, the likelihood of you putting your fingers all over it is pretty low. So once it's done, it, it won't flake off. I mean, even when I, I tap it, if I touch it, it comes off, but if I tap it, it doesn't really come off, if that's helpful. It's like an actual lily. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly, because it does sort of, I mean, the pollen pods like off. That was another thing, too, I was thinking about, you could probably dip these in glue and then dip them in some sort of powder and make them look like pollen if you wanted to. Oh, yeah. I didn't go that far, but if you want to do that's it, lovely. make sure and show us. Um, Kat would like to know what weight of crepe paper you're using. Okay, so this is the double-sided crepe paper. And I'll talk about crepe paper here in a second, but this is double-sided and this is the, um, from our double-sided pack. This is the, um, Ferns and Moss is the one that I'm using. So it's a darker green, more sagey green on one side, and then a more, I don't know, natural green on the other side. So I've cut a strip and the way that I set the patterns up is that you can get two leaves per strip. So I'm actually gonna fold this in half and cut it and I'm not even using the pattern, you can do it. I'm just folding it in half, that makes it easier. You can use the pattern as a guide or you can just hand cut them if you want to. So the pattern's set up that you can get two, two leaves per length or you can get one leaf per length. And I have, uh, for these lilies, I've actually put flat leaves on just like this. I've actually just taped them right on. And then to add some extra greenery, I always feel like when you're doing a bouquet, greenery is good to have. I've created these little, you know, two, two small leaves and then one larger leaf to add into it. So let me just show you how I put the leaf onto the stem. So I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit to give it some shape and just pinch it right around the base. I want it up high, pinch it right around the, uh, the base underneath the flower head and then just wrap it like this and you can add as many as you want to I generally try to keep if I'm doing a bouquet I try to keep the leaves closer to the top of the flower that way they don't get buried inside of the bouquet so that is how you make a lily so I want to talk about crepe paper really quick you guys if you have any questions yes Emily has one for us we're just asking where we can get the pattern from so the pattern, you can go underneath this. I believe there's a link for the pattern as a, a download for you guys. And we also have put links for any of the materials that we use, whether it be our crepe paper or things like the wire where we find this on Amazon. This is, um, it's called, it's, the company's called Decor. And actually I was gonna show you this as well, Decora. 
it's it's uh, imported from Italy, although it's made in China. And it comes in little packages like this at 50 wires each. And we get both green and white. We have the exact links for these wires underneath this video. So you can order them. And I'm telling you, if you haven't tried this wire yet, you're gonna probably love it just like we do. So as far as crepe paper goes, we have, you know, we, we've been using double-sided today. And this is from our double-sided, but I also earlier showed this as the extra fine crepe paper and the heavy crepe paper. There's crepe paper out there um, that th there's there's a lot of variety, but there's not a lot of variety. So there's crepe paper that's made in Italy and they call it 180 or 160 gram. And this is equivalent to the 160 gram. And then this is equivalent to, a, um, let's, see, let's see, is it, you guys help me out here. Is this a 50 gram, 60 gram? 60 grams, so this is equivalent to a 60 gram. And as you can see, if you get up close here, this, the extra fine crepe paper is so delicate. It doesn't, you can't see the crepes in the paper. Where the heavy, you can see them a bit more. And they're both great. They come in handy for different flowers. So we like both of them. And then the double-sided is two of these that are adhered together. So, and we also have a link below on how to make your own double size. But what I wanted to show you guys that no one's seen yet, this is a first, is we have a new line of crepe paper coming out in January. So, we had already, we have a 10 pack of our, our double sided, and we've now expanded that to two. And we're making them shorter so it's easier to ship because shipping costs are always kind of an issue. We want to get it to you guys, you know, as affordable as possible. So we have this beautiful um, kind of darker color palette and we're calling this the Enchanted Garden. And then this one is called the Secret Garden that has more of that lighter wedding color. And there's a lot of new colors in this palette. We went from 10 colors to 20. And then we also, we had um, put this out for Christmas. This is our Christmas pack. We've repackaged it just a little bit, but it's the same colors. And this is the heavy crepe paper, which is equivalent to the 160 pound. But we're also introducing three more in new color palettes. I love the colors. Here I know. Again. And then here, this, <laughs> I love them too. This one's called Tropical Garden. This one's called English Garden. That was for Emily. And then this one's called Botanical Garden, which is our beautiful greens. So when are these available? These will be available in January. And From... we, uh, we'll, we'll have them in our shop for sure. And then of course, um, if you guys uh, are not familiar with the double-sided, we have six different packets of double-sided and each of them has the two colorways. So there's six packs, but that means it's 12 different colors. So, and then we have our metallic and then our basics. And that's it. Isn't that exciting? No, I was asking <laughs> if we have any prices yet on those. Um, the prices are... I'll have to ask Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Anna! <laughs> so Anna over here, she's in charge with the developing all of this and she's the one that works with Germany and making for sure that we get the colors that we want and that all the quality is where it should be. So Anna's gonna tell me, do you know what our pricing is gonna be on these? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not yet. It's but a great <laughs> price though. <laughs> yeah, it's a great price. It's gonna be the same, you know, to what we have been selling it for already. Um, as far as, you know, these, these won't change at all. So, you know, you'll get the same amount for the equivalent of the same price. So anyway, does that help at all? Yes. <laughs> Any other questions that we have going on in No, Emily? I think we can probably wrap up and say okay. goodbye. There are some questions, I will get back to them. Um, and it's also important that people know that there will be an email going to all members later on today with the link to this so they can watch yes. again. And we will continue to monitor comments and questions. So we will. if they have anything else that they want to ask, we will get yes. on it straight away. And someday I have a dream that we'll be doing this class and you guys will actually be sitting here in front of me and we're all going to be making this together. But for now, this works. So hopefully we'll be able to do this again very soon. All right, thanks you guys for coming and make sure that if you make these crepe paper flowers, if you make the lilies or anything else, uh, share them with us by hashtagging um, hashtag made with Leah. Yeah. And so we can see and we can take a look and we love to share your work as well on our Facebook page. So make sure and do that. All right, thanks guys, bye. <laughs>